You know, I'm going to have to just pass on to John Myers when you see him next week what I say about him. But I'm going to talk, talk while he's away. Uh, he and I have uh, worked hard in our own, with our own gifts and I am amazed at how John's anthems, when he picks them, I give him the scriptures that I'm working on and basically what I'm trying to get across. And sometimes the anthems are a whole lot better than the sermons, I think. <laughs> and this is one where uh, take these words home with you and look at them. I would even, if I was you and I was uh, sitting in the pew, I'd cut them out and put them on the refrigerator and put a little sign that says, when, when I'm afraid, read this. Because those words speak volumes to what, uh, what the scriptures are saying to us today about faith and about believing in God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, the words that you have inspired men to write so that we may read them in our own generation, in our own situation, they're amazing. To see the, the faith and the fear addressed by your love and grace, may we also stand in the gap in the obstacles that face our, our families and our church and our community. Stand when it seems a difficult place to be. Stand as one in Jesus Christ with faith in your provision for all our needs. And we pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Some of you have heard a little bit about my background and I am an electrical engineer turned preacher. Okay? Well, those of you that have ever gone through engineering at Virginia Tech, yay! Uh, okay, uh, go focus. Uh, the first thing that they give you is a general engineering course. And I must confess, I have always been fascinated with the giant machines that civil engineers design to do these wonderful, massive uh, building projects. When they build the sky, skyways on the highways and stuff. But the one that I learned about in my freshman year at college was all the machines that were designed to cross this Chesapeake Bay. 17 miles of water. Now, that's not the Jordan. And it took years and engineering feats and lots of labor to cross the Chesapeake Bay. But can you imagine God saying, go stand in the bay so that the people can cross? Now, I don't know about you, but that would be a, a, a fearful uh, commandment of God is, this, is to go out in the middle of Chesapeake Bay and, and, and uh, it'll be dry ground. So, we attempt to cross paths on our own ability. And it takes ingenuity, it takes a lot of, a lot of help and, and struggle, but it's nothing in comparison to the power of God. We light four candles before the saints of God. Their, their light stands in the midst of us. And there's nothing that their lives standing, their light shining. With God, there's nothing that's impossible for us to accomplish. Our light shines as well, but theirs is a reminder that through the difficult the days, the joys of life, everything, they kept their faith as best they could. And God never failed them. And God will not fail us. The words of the song that you just heard, as we face each passing day, we will serve, honor, and obey. That's Christian life. Serve our Lord with our whole heart, soul, and mind. Honor Him with our lives and with our decisions. And obey His word even when it seems almost impossible. It's scary to stand. But we are all like little small priests of God that are servants doing what God asks us to do. And sometimes it seems impossible. But look at what the scriptures have told us. Give the, the lesson backwards. 
most of the time I'm walking you from the Old Testament up through the epistles, but this is one time when, how in the world do you get to the place where you can stand in the river with dry feet? How do you get there? Well, let's work backwards, actually, and go back to Thessalonians. In Thessalonians, Paul says to, to the people of God there, facing lots of trials, they're facing their own Jordans to cross. And he said, I thank God that you accepted the word of God. Not as the word of men, but the inspired word of God. That you accepted it, that you, you know, heard it, accepted it, and you live by that word of God. Now that's the first step in being able to get into the river. Is accepting the word of God as his word. His, his instruction manual for life. In vacation Bible school one time, uh, and uh, well, you probably already told us all the little ones and stuff. You know what Bible stands for? The B I B L E. I was told it's basic instruction before leaving Earth. Okay, the Bible is basic instruction before leaving planet Earth. Okay, so if anybody says there's not an instruction manual on how to live the Christian life. You can tell them there is. It's called the Bible. The basic instruction manual before we leave this earth. But first we've got to accept that that is what it, what it was meant to be. Now how many of you guys read the instruction manual when you get the new, newest toy? <laughs> how many wives say, did you read the manual? <laughs> Ah, I've got some wives there. I don't mind raising their hand. Okay. It's not just a guy thing, it's a people thing. And we can sometimes want to try something out without reading the manual. We want to try living the Christian life without reading how we're supposed to do it. So the first part of getting your feet dry in the, in the river is accepting the Word of God and reading the manual. Reading the instructions before you before you put the switch on, okay? Uh, who would know that you put metal in the microwave, it, it sparks? I mean, even though on the manual it said, don't do this, or you will get sparks. Look at Matthew's gospel story. Matthew says that uh, uh, that's where the bumper sticker comes from. You know, practice what you preach. It comes from the 23rd chapter of Mark, of Matthew. It says, don't follow the example of the pretend religious people that make a big show of coming to church and, and, and putting something in the offering plate and doing something fantastic. But when, and being like a preacher says, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, but not helping. Just putting burden and burden and burden on you. Don't be like that. Don't, don't worry about being the first. Be a servant. Have a servant's heart. Because when you help somebody else, you not only help them, but you help yourself. You help yourself to, to practice that love that's in the manual. It says, don't, God, when there's a need, and everybody else is running away from it, you run towards it. Think about uh, Scott and I and several other men are, are doing this study with the men, men of faith. And I pray for Scott and all the other firefighters. When, when there's a fire, most people leave. And they're running towards it. They're running towards it because in their heart they're serving their community and they're protecting families. And, and, and property, hopefully. But most of all, the people. As Christians, we're called to be servants. To care so much about another person that we sometimes do dangerous things. We put ourselves in danger. We, we stretch ourselves to the limit. And somebody says, well, what are you going to get? You're going to get a plaque, a medal, or something? No. Well, then why do you do it? Let me give you the answer that you can. Uh, I'm good. Sometime along, somebody's going to have to help me make some buttons. Okay? Uh, 
the answer when somebody says, why do you do these strange things of helping people? The button's going to say, because I can. Because I can. And if we can, we will. We accept the word of God. We choose to be a servant. Accepting God's word is honoring him. Serving God is, is that service. What were the words again of the song? As we face each passing day, we will serve, honor, and obey. Now we serve God, we honor God, but the obey part. Okay? How many of y'all like to obey? <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> The rest of y'all, how, how much trouble you'll have uh, with telling the truth here? Uh, I don't know about you, but I've always struggled with this thing, obey. It sounds like, ah, uh, I'm nobody's uh, whipping boy. I'm not doing, you know. To obey someone who loves, loves you with all your heart and is never going to ask you to do something that they're not going to do with you, that's not really a hard thing to obey. God says, I ask you to love one another as I have loved you. Is that any harder to do than to say, walk into that river and stand in that river until everybody else has gotten through? One of my roles as in ordination is that of priest, the observance of the sacraments, the holding up and honoring the word of God. And when God calls me every day to stand in the gap of somebody's life or, in the, or in, to face an obstacle so that others may pass through it, it's not an easy thing to do, to stand in a place of danger so that others may pass through safely. That's what this Christian life is all about. Our faith gives us strength. Last week I told you, it gives us strength. Remember? Remember Mel uh, standing on the faith stool? I mean, faith keeps us strong so that when God gives us opportunity and commands us to walk with his word into the dangerous place, the rivers of life that will threaten to overflow us, that we can stand there. The hardest thing in the world. Now, I don't know about the rest of you. If I was in the group, I'd get to the water's edge and I'd run like I'll get out until I got to the other end. I wouldn't stop in the middle and wait until everybody else got through. That's just not the way I was made. But when God says, I want you to do that, Joe, I say, uh, okay. And I keep looking up. And I keep looking at the water. And I look up. Because God wouldn't ask me to do something. That he's not going to be right there with his power and his grace and his love to help it be accomplished. So this week, what's going to be the Jordan River for you? What's going to be the obstacle that, that not only you face, but your group faces? What's going to be what your family faces? What your marriage faces? What the, your co-workers face? We're not alone in this world, and so you think about the people around you that are all facing the same obstacle, and know that God may be calling you to stand right there in the middle of the obstacle and open a way, open a way for the rest of them to get through. What will it be this week that you need to get past? And God's saying, I don't want you to be the first one through I want you to stop and keep it open for the rest. Now that's, that's keeping faith alive and putting it into practice. I am not going to sing to you again, but even though my heart is full of songs this morning, but I want to read you the words to think about. When you walk through the storm, keep your chin up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. 
At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.